In other years, people in Dorchester would be focusing this week on neighborhood pride and getting ready for a show of unity in a parade. Instead, there's a focus on other gatherings on streets, addressing a national response to acts of violence by police, but also a long history of racial disparities highlighted by the pandemic. To tell us how that's all being processed by the Dorchester Reporter is its managing editor and publisher, Bill Forey. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us, Bill. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you again. Bill, I want to talk to this sense of the moment right now, and in one way it's reflected in your paper, was in your thinking about an editorial about what's been happening around George Floyd, the protests around the country. You were thinking of writing one yourself, and then you saw an alternative. Tell us what you decided on. That's right, Chris. Um, you know, I write the editorials for the reporter um, most weeks, and we sign our editorials as well. So they're, they're personal essays, really. Um, and obviously, with everything that's uh, transpired, um, not only this week, but just throughout the years in our, in our context of covering uh, violence, race, um, class issues here in the neighborhood, I, I do have some things to say about it. Um, but I was also struck by just the uh, the eloquence and the um, the frustration in in a piece I read by Lee Pelton, who is the um, he's the president of Emerson College. He's also the board chair of the uh, Boston Arts Academy Foundation, which is located in Dorchester. And uh, President Pelton wrote a very um, a very powerful piece that he sent around to his school community. And when I read it, he said a lot of the things that, that I would say. Um, and also he says it as an African-American man and an African-American leader who has been through um, decades of discrimination, harassment, uh, not only at the hands of police officers, but just in, in his daily life. And um, I really felt that what he had to say this week spoke uh, spoke to something that I wanted to convey, but he could do it a lot better than I could. And I'm still coming to terms with what I want to say, Chris. This is a, this is a, a moving, dynamic story, and um, I just wasn't ready. And, and Lee Pelton, one of the things he wrote in his piece is he, does, he, he was conflicted about writing. He's still agonizing over it, as everyone is, uh, or most people. And I think um, I needed to have a couple more days to reflect on what's going on. And uh, in the meantime, Lee Pelton certainly speaks for me and speaks for many of the people uh, who I know. Well, one of the most important things people in the media do, and you certainly do it with, with the reporter, is you convene conversations between people in the community. And part of what's uh, going to be going on in that direction is a town hall. I think WBUR is involved in this. You're involved in it. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. Well, today at 6 p.m., um, we the, the reporter is a co-sponsor, a media sponsor, of an event that WBUR is convening virtually and online, obviously, um, through their space. And they're having their one of their reporters, uh, Kimberly Atkins is the moderator, um, uh, Monica Cannon Grant, who is uh, one of the organizers of uh, Tuesday evening's rally in Franklin Park, uh, will be one of the um, guests, as well as former Governor uh, Deval Patrick. Um, there will be other voices who will be joining the conversation and we're helping by promoting it to our audience. We feel that um, it's an um, opportunity to kind of, you know, hear from key, key leaders and also hear from the public about how they're feeling and, and where this uh, may be going. Well, uh, the way things are going, they're, they're changing so rapidly. I mean, we had a protest, a peaceful protest Sunday that had an aftermath that was ugly, and we had a peaceful protest on Tuesday. You started in Dorchester on the, on the border of Franklin Park there. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Well, we did have a reporter there at Franklin Park, Chris, and, uh, and, and there was some apprehension. Some businesses actually preemptively boarded up their windows, for example, in, in Codman Square uh, in anticipation of Tuesday's rally, which started at 5.30 uh, continued for a couple hours in Franklin Park. But the observation, from my point of view, watching it remotely, uh, from our reporter who was on the scene, from the reporting, all the reporting I saw from, from WBUR and other partners, um, and from people I know who went, was that it was entirely peaceful and that it was uh, actually uplifting and uh, a, a great demonstration of um, solidarity for the idea that uh, there needs to be reform that uh, black men and women who for, for many 
decades and longer have been targeted uh, for different treatment by law enforcement that uh, culminating ultimately apparently in this in this instant uh, instance with George Floyd's murder in Minneapolis uh, has just become uh, there's been a tipping point here and and yet um, that the tone of it and the outcome of it on Tuesday here in Dorchester and in other parts of the city where where the March March continued uh, was peaceful and uh, was passion impassioned but without violence. And that was a great relief, obviously, but it's a great uh, testament to the work of the organizers um, and to the people who came out. Um, there were some instances where it got tense. Uh, law enforcement, um, Boston police and other agencies um, on motorized bikes came through the crowd at one point. Um, I think it's been widely um, critiqued and criticized that, that that tactic was probably a bad idea, but uh, it didn't lead to, to any um, uh, lingering confrontation or violence. So uh, I think everybody is relieved to see that that was the outcome. And when you mentioned Monica Cannon Grant, I, I also associate her with uh, the March Against Racism in Boston, another peaceful uh, protest about yeah. three years ago. And I see a lot of continuity going back to that, even the Women's March uh, shortly uh, around after Trump became president. Uh, what do you see? Is, 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 is the protest about that kind of a trajectory or is this like 1968 all over again? Well, I, I mean, I think we all hope that 19, it's not 1968, but it, it's so fluid, Chris. It really will depend on how well um, leaders respond to this challenge and how, how well our um, communities, uh, community leadership kicks in. You know, uh, what one of the things I saw on Tuesday in report, reporting has borne this out is that uh, people like uh, Tito Jackson, the former Boston City Councilor and mayoral candidate, was very hands-on at, at, at key junctures of this um, Tuesday's events and was influential. I mean, he's a respected leader in, in our community. And I think one of the important things um, that will be borne out over the coming days and weeks is just how well uh, Boston neighborhoods have organized themselves and uh, built relationships, uh, multi-racial, multi-ethnic relationships over many years. Um, that'll, it'll be a test of that to see just how well we can come together. And it's, our, it's my hope, certainly, that we will. But um, if we don't, it, it'll, be, uh, it'll be a disappointment. It'll be, frankly, an indictment of a failure to do that. My, I'm optimistic that actually we, we, we have done um, quite a bit of community building that uh, I think Tuesday was an indicator uh, works. Well, uh, when you talk about community building, uh, one thing that we, we don't pay attention to in that regard all that much because it's behind the scenes is with the Dorchester Day Parade. You look as if you're, you're ready to go, uh, head down the <laughs> avenue, uh, but right. you have to do it, I guess, in a different way this year. Tell us about that. Sure, Chris. Well, you know, the Do Dorchester Day Parade is always the first Sunday in June, or shall I say Dorchester Day is always the first Sunday in June. Sometimes the parade gets rained out, and sometimes a global, you know, health emergency results in its cancellation, as is the case this year. Um, the parade won't happen. We knew that uh, six weeks ago. But, um, but we decided at The Reporter uh, to continue to celebrate Dorchester Day because the parade is, is a key element of that observation of, of, the, of the neighborhood we love, but it's not the only one. It's not the only way we can manifest our, um, our pride in, in being from this part of, of the city, being from this part of the world. Uh, for those of us who grew up here, as well as those of us who are new to Dorchester, which is of course a large group of people, um, what Dorchester Day has become in recent years, and you wrote eloquently about this, Chris, in this week's Reporter, and thank you for doing that, it's become a very different event from what it was perhaps in the 1960s and even 1970s when you first started covering it. Um, what it is today, I think, in large part is a celebration of diversity. It's a celebration of, of a neighborhood that is multicultural, multi-ethnic, um, people from all walks of life, uh, all sexual orientations, um, and uh, from all kinds of immigrant backgrounds. So when we go out and celebrate, usually on Dorchester Day, that's, that's what's most uh, exhilarating, I think, for, 
for those who go and those who participate or watch is it's just a parade of the whole world moving by you. Um, we're going to miss that element of it this this year, but uh, in this week's reporter and online at Dodd News, we are celebrating what it what it is and uh, what it will be again when this uh, pandemic emergency ends uh, and when we re, you know restore um, uh, some degree of normalcy and hopefully have a parade again next year. Now, I understand that you were writing about uh, something in your own life, going back to an earlier time, an interesting, uh, maybe pivotal thing in your life. Uh, uh, tell us about the art article that resulted from that. Well, in this week's reporter, we wanted to be a little bit more whimsical, I guess, and a little bit more uh, reflective. And, and, and there's a lot of memoir kind of articles in this special edition, reflecting on d different times in the neighborhood. And for me, uh, a formative and pivotal moment in my life as a young person growing up here was in 1985, which uh, I could have very well been wearing this at the time. Um, I was a, a, a sixth grader at St. Gregory's Elementary School, and I was a cast member in a, in a musical called Godspell, which many people probably know, and uh, it's, a, it's a, a 1970s musical that we staged as junior high school students in 1985 at St. Gregory's. And what was cool about that experience for me um, in, in, in over the course of my life was just how many friendships formed from that. It was a multicultural cast. Um, two of my very best friends uh, I met through that experience are still my best friends. Uh, Haitian American kids from, from Mattapan who were my classmates, who, but whom I hadn't really bonded with before that. And in the course of uh, doing that show, um, it really came to form lifelong friendships. And I think the re one of the reasons I wrote about it this week, Chris, uh, was I, I do think that those long-term relationships um, and authentic ones, not, you know, it's hard, hard to prefab this stuff and it's hard to do it on the fly. But if there are deep-rooted friendships and relationships and authentic ones, those are the kind of deep-rooted things that we need to uh, lean on and dig into right now uh, as a people. And everybody has some form of that. For me, um, it, it's Godspell and, and that St. Gregory's experience in the 1980s and how it still resonates with me today. Uh, Dorchester still resonates with, with another one of the contributors to your Dorchester Day issue, and that's Lawrence O'Donnell. Anything you can uh, tell me about his contribution? Well, actually, Lawrence didn't end up doing a piece, uh, Chris. He, he's been pretty busy with his show, and, and the events of the week, I think, got in the way of that. But, but Lawrence has been participating uh, in many ways with Dorchester events. He was a guest uh, last week uh, with uh, Taste of Dorchester. He provided a video to the um, Maha event, which is an annual event but moved online last week. So we'll be, I'm sure, hearing from Lawrence again, and he's a good uh, ally and friend, uh, often commenting on, uh, current events, and of course, wrote a uh, seminal book um, in the 1970s about police violence against uh, Black Americans here in Boston, uh, Deadly Force, which um, which many people are referencing uh, this week as a as a go to read. Um, this has been a, a long time coming, uh, but but it hasn't gone undocumented. And, and Lawrence O'Donnell began his career uh, really by writing about that. And finally, Bill, if people want to keep up with the news online or get hold of a copy of your special edition, what's the best way to do that? Well, you can read it right now if you want online at dotnews.com, which is our website. And this week's edition is in print. It's online and in print, so you can grab one. This happens to be your article, Chris, on the cover of the special section. And uh, hey, everyone have a great weekend. Enjoy Dorchester Day as safely as you can. We'll be having a small, you know, family-oriented backyard barbecue with a handful of people uh, and hopefully we'll reconvene and recreate it later in the summer.